Yeah. And like, you know, running HVAC businesses and shit that don't get vaccinated and get fucking clapped up. None of the fucking Republicans in positions of power are like, oh, I'm not going to get vaccinated or boosted. Like Greg Abbott has like probably for safety took like eight separate boosters. You know what I mean? of the Vietnam War. More than 25,000 soldiers poured into the small Central American Republic of Panama, supported by air power and a huge intelligence operation. On December the 20th last year, the Latin American Republic of Panama was being liberated. On paper, the invasion was about restoring democracy. In reality, this was a drugs bust, carried out to arrest one of America's most wanted traffickers. And this drug lord wasn't your typical on-the-run fugitive hiding out in the jungle. In fact, it was Manuel Noriega, the head of the Panamanian military and de facto ruler of the entire country. Noriega is responsible for the terror on our streets. And somewhat awkwardly for the US, Noriega had been a key American ally and a CIA intelligence asset so awkward. for decades. This is so awkward. How did that happen? <laughs> how, how did that happen, dude? What? Um, did they mention? Wait, hold on. This is how the Cold War met the war on drugs and how the CIA helped to create a cocaine dictator. Bro, I don't understand. The CIA is good though. Like, right? They're the good guys in the movies that I watch. They're not the bad guys. It's... Panama is a relatively small country, and there's no particular reason why it should be considered a vital strategic interest to the US military, apart from one thing, the Panama Canal. About 5% of all global trade- I love when people still say, does the government not learn or do not care when this consistently happens? No, it's, they're doing it so it happens. That's the difference. Like it's, no, they're, they're intending on it. It is intentional. They're banking on it. Many such cases, they're doing it, and they're doing it on purpose. That's the, kind of the point. Through the canal, which tends to make the U.S. sit up and pay attention. Throughout the 20th century, America ran the canal directly through a series of military bases here, here, and here. The United States is deeply engaged in the anti-communist struggle uh, in the competition with the Soviet Union. The United States was concerned that the Soviet Union was making a play for Latin America. Panama was a key player on the side of the United States. Manuel Noriega first came to work for the CIA all the way back in- It's so weird that like, historically, the people that the Soviets were siding with were literally the fucking good guys, straight up. And you can't really say that in most instances, and the people that the United States was siding with were literally the bad guys. Normally, I would stay away from making such uh, broad claims. Normally, I would stay away from, uh, you know, uh, stating something like making a, a normative declar declaration like this, especially as it pertains to history. But straight the fuck up. Straight the fuck up especially in Latin America, okay? Especially in Latin America. Stay away. No, you wouldn't. No, I, I, I think that, like, making Norman declarations about uh, history with the exception of, like, chattel slavery being bad and Nazis being bad is, is how you uh, often get into, uh, you know, weird territory. Okay? But with Latin American countries, uh, Soviet involvement, straight up not bad. In 1955. By the mid-1960s, he was receiving specialist training in intelligence and psychological warfare at the infamous School of the Americas, where the US military trained many of Latin America's most prolific human rights abusers. More than 200 Latin American students hailing from 18 different nations, study technical skills and leadership techniques at the school. After a coup in 1968, Noriega rose to become head of military intelligence. And this is when his career, 
both as a CIA spy. And a debate lords on the way to Google Soviet atrocities in South America. Yeah, so they can come back with some hot takes from Wikipedia, dude. Drug trafficker began to take off, with Noriega using his position to provide protection to drug shipments from South America. Essentially, he's taking money from drug traffickers to help them out. Uh, but at the same time, he's cooperating with the CIA, with military intelligence. He becomes more useful to the CIA and to the DIA, to military intelligence. Yeah. Perhaps the most controversial question surrounding Noriega's involvement with US intelligence is how much the CIA knew about his drug trafficking and either chose to ignore it or actively protect him. This is particularly relevant to future president George H.W. Bush who in the mid-1970s was head of the CIA. Sure, certainly he had no involvement with uh, the, the beginnings of any of these things that they're talking about when he was the head of the CIA. Of course, certainly, certainly not. It, it must have been just a total... Never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, or George H.W. Bush where he was on the day that JFK was assassinated. <laughs> Boosh. I said Boosh. I, to be fair, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, but also, he, neither does George H.W. Bush, if you ask him. Rather, what part of Dallas he was in, he doesn't remember. What part of the grassy knoll he was in, he just can't make up his mind on. Was it, what, what part, where was he? When, when, you know, JFK's brain was splattering. Hmm. Where was he? Where, what was he doing? You know? It will be classified in 20 years? No shot, dude. It, that will never... I don't even know if it's, it's true or not, but that, that definitely will never be declassified, even if it was true, okay? Trump knew JFK Cruz dad line attack was meant for Jeb? Oh my God. Wait, are you fucking serious? Pretty sure he was in the Falklands during that? No, dude, George W. Bush was in Dallas. Uh... His drug trafficking was not a mystery. The Bureau had briefed Mr. George Bush of the Central Intelligence Agency on the reaction of Cuban exiles in Miami to the assassination. Also quoted an identified source with close connections to the intelligence community as saying Mr. Bush started working for an agency in the 1960s or 61 using his oil business as a cover for clandestine activities. To the CIA. The CIA was working with many people in, the, in Central America in this period who were involved in drug trafficking. The same people who were transporting guns on our behalf, in many cases, were also transporting cocaine. George Bush, in 1976, is head of the CIA. Noriega actually goes to meet with Bush in Washington around this period. Noriega's involvement in drugs was serious enough that as early as 1972, the Nixon White House actually considered assassinating him. But he was considered so essential by the CIA and the Pentagon that the plan was never carried out. And Awkwardly enough for George Bush's later claims of ignorance, in 1976, the CIA actually put Noriega on a regular annual salary that eventually rose to over $200,000 a year, the head of the CIA at the time being George Bush. Then, in 1983, Noriega took full control as de facto dictator of Panama. 
Noriega went straight into business with the rising Colombian cartels, giving them landing strips for their cocaine shipments at upwards of 100 grand per flight. Did drugs get transported in his aircraft through this deal that you arranged? I'm not talking about George W. Bush on 9-11. I'm talking about George H.W. Bush on the day that JFK died, was assassinated. Uh, we set up a deal that ended up deal. Andrew is in control as de facto dictator of Panama. Noriega went straight into business with the rising Colombian cartels, giving them landing strips for their cocaine shipments at upwards of 100 grand per flight. Did drugs get transported in his aircraft through this deal that you arranged? Uh, we set up a deal that ended up in a drug shipment. When Pablo Escobar murdered the Colombian Minister of Justice in 1984 and had to go on the run, it was Noriega's Panama that offered him shelter. At the same time, Noriega was keeping up his contacts with the American intelligence agencies. Any drug trafficker who didn't pay could be reported to the DEA, effectively making them the muscle of Noriega's narco protection racket. I'm uh, TOS here. And Noriega wasn't just cashing in on the cocaine flowing north to the US. For decades, America had encouraged Panama to resist communism by becoming the Switzerland of Central America, establishing a strong banking sector with extremely strict privacy laws. So sick. This, of course, was very handy for drug cartels needing to launder money. And plane loads of cash began flying in from Miami, with Noriega providing protection until the money could disappear. Seems like we only did good things in South America. I don't know what this fucking Brit is talking about, dude. I... I... I don't get it. I mean, it seems like what? Uh, sorry, sweaty. You just, it seems like you don't like it when brown people get to do banking for themselves. Mm, you just want them to be over reliant on the Western uh, developed nations. Fucked up. Mm. Unacceptable. Wow. Here you are. Here you are talking shit about America uplifting brown voices and, uh, and upholding. Uh, Four more years. You know, the industrial capacity of, of Latin American nations, I think. To the opaque Panamanian Latinx. banking system. Latinx money laundering. The is swimming in a sea of money. <laughs> money that filters back into the legitimate economy. The real money starts pouring in. The cartels in Colombia are now very active. Ye -ye, Drug trafficking is going out of control. Billions of dollars are being produced by the cartels and Noriega. It is really funny to think like, I mean, a lot of people are completely oblivious to this stuff. So it's always funny to think like, uh, you know, that America has any say on the planet. Like America has any sort of like moral grandstanding that they could do. You know what I mean? Like that they have any room to be like, wow, it's so fucked up how these other countries are doing stuff. It's like, dude, are, are you serious? If you even have a fraction of this knowledge, it's like it, it, the hypocrisy is astounding. It will literally make you go fucking crazy. Okay. That is offered a chunk of that. Noriega was able to keep getting away with all this throughout almost the entire 1980s, partially because the Reagan administration was supporting right wing rebels known as the Contras as they fought a bloody civil war in Nicaragua. Congress had made support. Yeah. Oh, wait. What? Congress made supporting the Contras illegal. Hold on. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me America was arming and training yet another genocidal group of hyper right wing ultra nationalist paramilitaries? Wait. Stop. That would never happen. And also, that would be illegal. Wait. You mean to tell me that Congress made it illegal and yet they still continue to do it? This does not seem similar to anything that is going on at all. Why are they doing Russian propaganda? I mean, fuck. I, why are they doing Nicaraguan propaganda? That's weird. I can't place my finger on exactly what this uh, is, is similar to that is prescient and uh, is happening currently. Uh, my propaganda. Fuck, I, what? You mean to tell me that, like, wait, hold on. Let me just run that again. Let me just... Uh... ...way with all this throughout almost the entire what? 1980s. Partially because the Reagan administration was supporting right-wing rebels known as the Contras as they fought a bloody civil war in Nicaragua. 
Congress had made supporting the Contras illegal. So this all had to be done off the books. Wait, stop. What? No, dude. That's fucking bullshit. That's crazy. That's not serious. That's... That's such unseriousness, dude. What? There's no way. No way. No way. Um, what? Even the Guardian writing about it? They say Azov fighters are Ukraine's greatest weapon and maybe its greatest threat. The battalion's far right volunteers' desire to bring the fight to Kiev is dangerous. Post conflict stability. Yeah. Wait, no way. No shot. When I say that, I'm a fucking Russian propagandist. Uh, so, crazy. At the Shit, Abbey, dude. Have you ever done coke? I have. And that's when Noriega came in. He was providing intelligence. That's number one. Number two was arms shipments. So, between the booming cocaine trade and clandestine military supply chains, how did it all come crashing down? In the early 80s, an opponent of Noriega's in Panama named Hugo Spadafora made a series of very public accusations about Noriega's drug trafficking activities. The military seized Spadafora, and a day later, his tortured and decapitated body was discovered. But what probably brought down Noriega was more that he'd simply outlived his usefulness. The Cold War was... Seven years old? Dude, what do you think? Are you fucking insane? It's just that, first of all, those are the only two that, like, immediately came up. That's why I pulled them out. But you think there aren't plenty of examples that we have gone over multiple times? Like, I was just making a fucking meme. Like... What are you talking about? Winding down and the American defense establishment was getting less paranoid about communists and more twitchy about drug cartels. If we can't take Noriega with the power that we have in the area, how are we going to deal with the drug lords in Mexico, in Colombia, in Bolivia? And when are we really going to take on that war? In 1988, Noriega was indicted in a Miami court on multiple drug trafficking charges. During his election campaign, George Bush had been questioned about his CIA links with Noriega. But that didn't stop him from winning the presidency a year later. I mean, anybody who sits there and does nothing and says he didn't know that Noriega was doing drugs and running drugs and a suspected murderer, in my judgment, doesn't have what it takes to lead this country. In his first TV address as president, Bush held up a bag of crack and declared a major escalation in the war on drugs, claiming it was a just- The same energy of the crack cocaine sentencing disparity was literally the same energy why George W. George w. Bush was able to wipe his fucking dick on the floor with Dukakis, by the way, famously. Uh, the Willie Horton ad. Uh, and this might come as a surprise to you, but it's just specifically because of- uh, Specifically because of, and you might have guessed this already, uh, white supremacy. That's the most powerful, the most powerful fucking way that you can, uh, you know, the way that you can win votes in the United States of America, okay? Cause. Victory over drugs is our cause a just cause and with your help we are going to win and a not overly subtle what's oliver north doing right now um for a brief stint he was the head of the nra reference to bush's drug policy speech the invasion was called operation just cause noriega was the intelligence hub in in central america he knew where the bodies were buried on all sides he knows what the cia is doing and all of the dirty work that we are participating in the interesting thing is that he never uses that information over 500 panamanians died in this drugs bust along with 23 u.s soldiers noriega tried to claim diplomatic asylum in the vatican embassy in panama but U.S. troops surrounded it and blasted Van Halen songs until he couldn't take any more and surrendered. Huh? He's a fugitive drug dealer, uh, and we want to see him brought to justice. And if that helps, if there's some incentive for some Panamanian to turn him in, that's a very million bucks that I would be very happy to uh, sign the check for, yes. The potential for embarrassment is high, with the defense team promising revelations of CIA involvement 
in the murky world of international drug smuggling and gun running. Noriega was flown to Miami, stood trial on the drug charges, and was sentenced to 40 years. He served 17 before being extradited to a prison term in France and then to another in Panama before dying in 2017. For all the bullets fired, people killed, and billions spent on the war on drugs since Noriega was sent to prison, the drug trade has only increased, and the people who run it have only got richer. We'd like to congratulate drugs for winning the war on drugs. Crazy. Crazy. Um, wait, is there is there more? Did the CIA actually sell crack in the 80s? I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. For decades, the American government has been accused of intentionally flooding the streets with hard drugs. The CIA and law enforcement have supposedly been funneling drugs into the inner cities and to the African-American community in- Bro, the CIA peddles drugs harder than I fucking pedal the top of the hour ad break, okay? Harder. And if you no longer want to see those drugs at the top of the hour, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, okay? That's right. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Streamer. That way you can avoid those ads. Here's the woman ad break now. In particular, as part of a covert effort to stop them attaining stability, building wealth, and achieving political power. Much like, yeah, much like your drug dealer, I'm also late on delivering your fucking top of the hour ad. You know what I'm saying? All right, I got to pee real African-American, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. And for the other non-African people, they should know that this directly will harm them too. These ideas took particular hold in the 1980s with the emergence of the so-called crack epidemic. No it's easy to understand how people of color may not believe the US authorities have their best interests at heart. But do these particular drug charges stick? Did the intelligence agencies actually play a role in flooding American cities with cocaine? In this episode, we're exploring whether the CIA was actually responsible for the crack epidemic and how exactly this story gained so much traction. The story of the CIA and crack cocaine doesn't actually begin on the streets of LA or Miami. It begins in the jungles of Central America. In 1979, the dictatorial government of Nicaragua was overthrown by socialist revolutionaries called the Sandinistas. In response, right-wing groups known as the Contras began a brutal paramilitary campaign, receiving money and weapons from the CIA as part of the Cold War struggle against the Soviet Union. If we cut off the freedom fighters, we will be giving the Soviets a free hand in Central America, handing them one of their greatest foreign policy victories since World War II. But in 1982, Democrats in Congress passed laws to cut off support for the Nicaraguan rebels. So the Contras and their CIA backers had to find new ways of funding their struggle. What they found was cocaine. By the late 1970s, more people in the US were snorting coke than ever before. Most of it imported from Colombia. In the early 80s, smokable cocaine, or crack, exploded across American cities. This proved to be a gold mine for countless organized crime groups, even those backed by the CIA. And today, cocaine and marijuana are found throughout our society from top to bottom. And that means corruption top to bottom and gang war violence. The Contras were soon linked with Colombian cartels, and in 1985, How'd they get the reporters there? Robert Parry and Brian- How'd the cocaine get here? This is crazy. Barger broke an almost unbelievable story. They claimed Nicaraguan rebels were involved in cocaine trafficking, and that not only did the CIA know about these activities, they allowed them to continue in order to help fund the Contra's war effort. When Bob Perry and Brian Barger got a hold of a CIA report revealing- What's the biggest epidemic of this, um, of the 2020s, and even leading up to like late, you know, 2010s, 2020s? Fentanyl, right? Heroin, opioid epidemic, right? Hmm. It's crazy, just, you know. CIA would never involve themselves with that one as well, right? I, I mean, certainly not. 
<clears throat> That's crazy. Just like wherever wherever black budgets can be beefed up, find uh, drugs that can can fill up those coffers. The American government suspiciously will be um, controlling territories somehow. Was finally pushed into this community after Jimmy Dore started talking that shit have. about painting your nails. Not based at all. If that's all your opponents have against you, then I believe I'm in the right place. Thank you, the lonely nut. ...that they were working in the mid-1980s with Contras fighting the Sandinista government. They were warned by their editors that this was not something that was... Don't forget, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Poppy, it doesn't actually uh, go into America. Uh, that fentanyl is coming directly from uh, Mexico. Now, the link between, um, you know, the cartels in Mexico and uh, special forces training, that one is a little bit shakier. Uh, the Afghan fentanyl, the, the Afghan opium that actually ended up on the streets uh, uh, was just in the streets of Europe and everywhere else. Or not fentanyl, the heroin. Um, fentanyl is synthetic, it's not made of opium. Sorry. Um heroin it was going to make the people that own their newspapers very happy and it both of them ended up losing their jobs at this point the cia strongly denied that they were involved in the drug trade but on the streets the rumors began to spread yeah no pharmaceutical grade opium comes from tasmania that's different that's not what we're talking about and that is actually you know bought and sold by pharmaceutical corporations which are also responsible Hashtag for the for opioid uh, crisis, the opioid epidemics, epidemic. Fentolin, fent, fentolin, fentanyl in the United States comes from Mexico. Majority of it. The opium or uh, the heroin that you see, street level heroin that you see, in other parts of the world, not America, come from Afghanistan. That the government was either actively or passively allowing crack to be sold. These remained just rumors until 1996, when a reporter with the San Jose Mercury News named Gary Webb picked up the story from a new angle. Webb investigated the case of Freeway Rick Ross, who in the early 1980s was the most important kingpin in LA's crack scene, and probably America's first ever crack millionaire. What's the most money you ever made in a day? Three million dollars. What Webb uncovered was that Ross's main cocaine supplier was a guy named Danilo Blandon, a Nicaraguan exile who funneled tens of thousands of dollars. Which, by the way, fun fact, Rick Ross, the, the Rick Ross Teflon Don, Rick Ross that you know as the rapper, was actually a CO and just like totally fucking stole this, you know, highway Rick Ross's name to become a rapper, but he was actually a CO dollars in cocaine profits back to the Contras through banks in Miami. Blandon, in turn, worked for Norwin Menises, perhaps the biggest not drug highway, freeway in Nicaragua, Rick, sorry. who had deep ties Whatever, to the dude. Contra leadership. Whatever, fucking shut up, okay? I'm, my brain is not working. And was widely thought to benefit from CIA shut protection. Up. The DEA had always tried to arrest Nora Manessas, who was living openly and raising money for No, a lot of people don't know that. People literally don't know Rick Ross, the rapper, is like a, a, a fucking a CO. Like, they, they don't realize that. High-speed rail, Rick Ross? Yeah, talk to me when you're high-speed rail. No, he's a corrections officer, not a CI, a corrections officer. He was a cop. He, he worked in the prison system. Here. Damn, I got photos. Have you never seen this? Like, you guys have never seen this? There you go. Oh! <laughs> uh, 
another photo. Hold on. This one's pretty funny. Here. able to build a case against him and felt like there was something about this guy that must explain why they couldn't do that, that he was protected in other words. And when Gary Webb's story came along, he not only showed where the connection was between Manessas and Blandon and Freeway Ricky Ross, but he also went into all this history and unveiled how there was a very large, well-documented crack distribution ring that had operated for years with the CIA turning a blind eye. What's the process you go through? Um, like, okay, you're- I love the Jim Norton show is like the Don't revelatory- the straight out band. Uh, the the, the, the revelatory uh, uh, investigative reporting component here is the, the fucking Jim Norton show, dude. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the guy on top, and where do you get your coke from? I was getting my coke from a guy by the name of Oscar Danilo Blandon, who uh, also was my informant. He's a guy that set me up with the police. Uh, when I went to trial, we found out that he was what they call a Contra. Uh, the Contras was backed by the CIA, and it sparked this big investigation by this reporter called Gary Webb. In August of 1996, the Mercury News published Webb's reports in a three-part series titled Dark Alliance. The story grabbed attention across the US, particularly amongst the African-American community, which had been targeted by law enforcement following the rise of crack. Tell America what the story is about. It was about a cocaine ring that operated along the West Coast of the United States. Uh... It's crazy what happened to this guy, you know? He just felt really fucked up about um everything that he uncovered i guess you know he just felt conflicted and um i guess he didn't have uh you know the the logic song to listen to um to... so so the crazy United states uh throughout most of the 80s. And some of the money they were making was going to support an army that the men who ran the cocaine ring worked for called the FDN. This was an army that the CIA- Literally, for the record, for those of you who don't know what I'm saying, uh, Jeffrey Epstein is not the last or the first time that uh, an important asset to our uh, three-letter agencies suspiciously suicided themselves. You know. Or was suicided. Um, Gary Webb's official cause of death is still considered a suicide, despite the fact that uh, you know he had not one but two gunshot wounds to the back of the head. Impressive. They started in 1981 and supported. Better known to us, most of us who remember the news, the Contras. Nowhere in Dark Alliance did Webb explicitly assert that the CIA was responsible for the crack epidemic, let alone that they intentionally sold the drug. But that was the narrative that got picked up in the popular imagination, probably not helped by the Mercury News illustrating the feature with an image of a guy smoking a crack pipe superimposed on the CIA logo. But the story took off not just due to his explosive claims, but also because of another new and highly addictive force that had begun to reshape American society the internet. Dark Alliance was the first major piece of investigative journalism to be published simultaneously in print and online. The story went viral, getting picked up by everyone from street protesters to talk radio hosts and eventually politicians looking to attack the Reagan and Bush administrations. California Congresswoman Maxine Waters became a particular champion of the piece. As a public elected officials, all of us must be concerned that our government could have anyway been involved in drug trafficking. The reaction to the story was so intense that the CIA director took the unprecedented step of defending the agency at a heated LA community meeting. It is an appalling charge that goes to the heart of this country. I will get to the bottom of it and I will let you know the results of what I found. How 
are we supposed to trust the CIA official to investigate themselves? What was equally shocking, though, was the reaction of America's mainstream media. Webb and the San Jose Mercury News often maintain that Dark Alliance was intended as the beginning of an investigation that larger newspapers with more resources could then continue. But what actually happened- I just want to point something else uh, out again. He was found dead in his home and the official ruling was suicide. And I want to mention once again that there weren't one, but two gunshot wounds. Two. One more month before like, one year pog. Incredibly sloppy shit. Okay. Two. happened was that instead of investigating the CIA, major papers like the LA Times, Washington Post, and New York Times all attacked Webb himself. Oh, Webb yeah. was eventually hounded from his job and found himself unable to work as a journalist. He died by suicide in 2004. Oh, come on. That's it? That's... Oh, come on, dude. Are you serious? That's all they, is they, all they say about this? All three major newspapers felt completely caught off guard by this story, so they fully attacked Gary Webb with a vengeance, unlike anything that had ever been seen before, and completely attempted to not only discredit his story and frame it as a conspiracy theory, but pretty much ruin his entire reputation. We saw a complete failure, perhaps one of the most shameful examples of how the mainstream press can operate uh, in destroying the reason for the record, the reason why I wanted to mention it is because people just, you know, Vice didn't even mention the two gunshot wounds, not one, two gunshot wounds. Okay. I just want to mention once again, not one, two gunshot wounds to the back of the dome in this apparent suicide. a fellow journalist for getting at an important story. Uh, and Webb um, suffered mightily for this. But as people got more and more lost in the minutiae of attacking or defending Webb's journalism, the focus- Yes, that's where the meme, uh, two uh, suicide by two shots at the back of the head comes from, yes. on the CIA's involvement in the drug trade began to get lost. A fact that internal CIA documents held up as a good example of managing a public relations nightmare. But in 1998, the CIA's own Inspector General released a report essentially admitting that many elements of the Dark Alliance story were true. That the agency had known that people linked with the Contras were importing cocaine, had done nothing to stop them, and had even protected them from investigation. So By the way, this is the this is the part of it that is like really fucked up. Okay? Years later, they will conduct an investigation, but because the media is always operating in unison with the State Department, that because the media is always operating in unison when it comes to foreign policy issues that ends up becoming like domestic policy problems, okay? That nobody gives a fuck when they declassify this shit. At the time when you mention it, you're looked at like a fucking psycho. You're like, oh, pfft, whatever, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Yo, oh, there's a conspiracy. There's a conspiracy. And then years later, the CIA is like, oh, yeah, we did that. That was sick when we did that. You know, it was, it was actually pretty cool when we did that. And it's not a big deal, actually. So shut the fuck up. Alex Jones take? I know. Well, my, my takes on Alex Jones are also interesting as well, if you want to know that. I 100%... I think Alex Jones is a CIA op. Straight up. I believe it. I 100% believe that Alex Jones is a CIA op to vilify conspiracies that are real. Conspiracies to murder. Conspiracies like fucking, uh, you know, uh, Webb's uh, murder. Jeffrey Epstein's murder. Uh, shit like that will look strange when you, uh, when you have a guy championing conspiracy theories that also say that and a million other things that are psychotic.
Think about it. I think the real conspiracy in that situation is having a guy having a very loud and very fucking public face of like all conspiracy theories be someone like Alex Jones. Do you genuinely believe that or is that just a meme? No, I, I do. I do believe it. I do. I, li I do believe it. Especially because like, you know, Joe Rogan loves a, a fucking having CIA assets on his show and being like, oh, I love conspiracy theories. And then he has like Alex Jones and like fucking Mike Baker or whatever on. Since I first heard that from you, I believe it 100%. Yes. Now you're reaching? Yeah, dude. The, <laughs> the American intelligence apparatus would never do such a wild thing. You know? Like, they would also never fucking, you know, use LSD to try to figure out ways of mind-controlling people or a million other things that they've literally done that they openly declassify afterwards. You know? Oh, man, our... Our, our, our intelligence apparatus would never fucking infiltrate, intercept black radical uh, communist groups uh, and, and even assassinate their leadership, like literally directly at night while they're sleeping. Uh, things like that could never happen. Those are all conspiracy theories. Like none of that is a conspiracy theory. Those are all well-documented, factually true, factually correct takes that they straight up fucking openly admit. It's not even... That's the crazy thing is that like everything I just mentioned to you, everything I just mentioned to you just yes. now is openly out and about declassified information. None of it is a secret now, at least. I'm pro Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to mouths. What you can attribute to stupidity. Honestly, I don't know, man. It's the shit they do not declassify that you have to be really uh, suspicious of, is all I'm going to say. You had uh, the CIA finally coming to the table and admitting that what we reported in the 80s and what uh, Webb reported in the 90s was in fact true. Mr. Manessis was actually... Wild, dude. Written in pain. Gary Webb planned, planned his death with polite precision. He typed out four lengthy suicide notes and put them in the mail to family members. He placed his prearranged cremation certificate. This article, unironically, and trigger warning, suicide, I'm going to read this. This article unironically states, he pulled the trigger and the bullet sliced uh, through his face, exiting his left cheek, a non-fatal wound, so he pulled the trigger again. He literally shot himself in the head with his revolver twice. Wild to consider that the, New York, uh, the Los Angeles Times would just write... Uh, such insanity so openly. No, it is non-fatal. You can, a lot of, a lot of suicides to the head, uh, a, a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of times when people try to kill themselves with a gun 
by putting it in their mouth or whatever, they fucking miss and then they fuck themselves up for the rest of their lives. Like it's a lot diff- it's a lot more difficult than you would think. But nobody fucking shoots themselves twice in the head. You hear the story of of people surviving and then being fucked up permanently for the rest of their lives. You don't hear the story of them, you know, ever. I mean, ever. Double tapping themselves. Could you review my ban? I would appreciate it. It actually happens. The first shot, they aren't sure and anxiety comes in. They don't get it right. They gain the confidence. That's literally not true. It's fucking straight up. I know he wrote suicide letters to his family and his ex-wife believed it was suicide. That's crazy. You, you never forge shit like that. You're right. I mean, the, the FBI never famously tried to get Martin Luther King to commit suicide. Um, by writing such letters, for example, not on behalf of him, but to him and blackmailing him regularly to try to, uh, you know. Anyway. Let's continue. He indicted in 1984. He was known within uh, my own sources in DEA told me he was known as a, El Gle de la Droga, the king of drugs. Uh, he was in more than 40 files and indicted mysteriously. And people within DEA say that it was CIA intervention that kept this sealed indictment from ever being opened. In one case detailed in the report, when traffickers linked to the Nicaraguan king of drugs, Norwin Menezes, were busted in San Francisco in 1983, the CIA even requested that tens of thousands of dollars which had been seized be returned to the drug traffickers. The CIA admitted that they knew that these guys were selling drugs and had went to the Attorney General and asked the Attorney General could they not report it. Uh, because the mission that they were trying to accomplish was so big, it was a matter of uh, uh, U.S., uh, what do they call it? National security? National security. So wait, the U.S., the, the CIA was allowing this just kind of to happen, the, the drugs to go in, and they were just, they weren't putting it there, but they were allowing it to happen and funneling the That's money. That's what we believe. This is a complex story, but let's try to answer the big questions. Did the CIA actually sell crack? On the evidence we've got, no. There were no agents with sunglasses and earpieces slinging what? rocks on the streets. Bro, yeah, the CIA doesn't sell crack in the same way that, like, Hershey's doesn't take advantage of child slave labor. They outsource it. What the fuck do you mean? That doesn't mean they're not doing it directionally and, and totally, not only j not turning just a blind eye to it, but, like, literally doing it, paying the people that are doing it, not investigating the people that are doing it, protecting the people that they're doing it, that's fucking insane. How can you make this video and then that's the conclusion you arrive at? What the fuck? Did the CIA work with and protect major drug traffickers? Yes, absolutely. They've been forced to admit that publicly. The real tragedy here is that as far as- Bro, people think the CIA is a bunch of fucking dudes wearing aviators and like, you know, a, a clap at motherfuckers. And it's, at a certain point, they probably had some field agents that were like that, and I'm sure they still do, okay? But now, 
and even back then, it was like accountants, okay? It was, you know, there's still plenty of fucking analysts, motherfuckers, in the CIA. They're not going to go out uh, in the streets and, and directly sell crack. They're going to convert CIs. They're going to arrest people and then work with the people that they've arrested and tell them, hey, you're arrested now, bitch. You're my bitch now. You, you're going to do the things I want you to do. It's fine. You can keep doing it, but you can, keep, you can keep being out and about, but you're, you know, you need to do what I want you to do, okay? Which is sell crack. Why no one thinks that they're like, you know, dealing on the streets. You know what I mean? No one. As far as we know, no one from the CIA or the mainstream media even lost their jobs over this. The only people who suffered for it were the journalists who exposed the story and the millions of people targeted by the unjust and racist laws that were passed in response to the 1980s. I mean, it, it's, like, they're, they're basically saying they sold it without saying they sold it. We'd like to congratulate. So I don't know what else to say about that. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>